Maggie Christina here with Grassroots Dog Training. I'm here with Kelly Winky. Don't miss this whole video because we're about to show you some shit that you have probably never seen. Let's get started. So I'm at the very tippy top of one of the challenge course pieces. And I'm about to go down the slide because I can. Wee! Good dog, Maggie! I am such a good girl! Cardinal rules we always had out here. Anything the dog touches with the front feet, they must also touch with the back feet. If your dog is going to fall off of something, they're really not going to fall with their front end. If they fall with their front end, they didn't fall, they fell. Um, one thing we always express too is not to go too fast. At any point on any piece of equipment, you should be able to tell your dog to freeze and they should freeze on anything, stay. So we never really stress speed um, because you'll see as we go through some of this other stuff, if you got a dog that's flying through it like a maniac, they can and will get hurt. So this so they is have complete, to go slow, completely different from agility. Yeah, that's completely awesome. Um, no yeah, fence to all those agility ad fly. addicts. And again, we don't want them flying off like idiots. And they had to sit on this platform. They had to sit on that platform, and then they would walk the beam. This so there's like a lot of like uh, almost like safety checkpoints. You have them stop, tons, gather themselves. Tons of safety checkpoints. This one especially. This is this is a real pain in the ass too. When you've got a brand new dog doing this for the first time, this is a 20 minute obstacle. Oh least. wow. Yeah, it takes a long time. So they come up through here, and as soon as you get the dog in here, we down. Oh, you get him in here? Yeah, first we go underneath, and we down. Wow, okay. And all we do is chill for a second. We just chill. And anytime the dog starts to get too, like, riled up, we just stop and we just chill. And we're not gonna go forward until we're like completely, completely relaxed. And then we walk, we walk, we walk, we walk, we walk. Now here, you've got this gap. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and many a dog has lost their back end through this space. Um, what the dogs are taught, and this is again to, to kind of test confidence, trust in the handler. When you see stuff out here that's asymmetrical, it's not bad construction. It's actually all deliberate. When you make things really symmetrical, the dog can fit the pattern. They know exactly how far to move their feet. When uh -huh. you make it asymmetrical, the dog has to focus more. They can't just get into a walking pattern, mm -hmm. okay? So here, front feet go here. You would lead the dog across, front feet are here, and we would actually down. Okay. And we wanted the dog to down with the front end here and the back end here, belly straight down. Wow. Feels weird, a lot of dogs don't dig it, but if you got a dog that will do that for you, that's a dog that trusts you. And wow. then we go up here. Now up here is where you gotta start watching yourself. Every board, again, must be touched by a front foot and a back foot. There is no skipping boards. That's how they fall, uh -huh. okay? And if the dog is dashing ahead of you, we stop them, we put the feet back, and now we're just gonna stand, stay, and we're just gonna hang, we're just gonna relax. And they will, eventually. They'll just stand here on the boards, and then they'll start taking in the breeze, and you'll see the muscles relax, you'll see the face relax, and now we're ready to go forward again. And when I'm teaching this, every single board we have to stop. Every one we have to stop. Because if you have a dog that comes up this ramp and they go, party, I did it. We don't oh, want them jumping off of this. Yeah. Again, safety checks. If you've taught your dog to come up and chill on this board that's dangling here. That, that's and now, awesome. And now you're going to call your dog off of it. When you call your dog off of it, what's going to happen? Oh, okay? they're going to push off. They're going to push. Shoop, now you have this lovely gap. Foot slips. Bam. On the foot. Ooh. So when you call your dog off, Always we would stabilize the board when we would call the dog off. Absolutely every time. Well, this literally reminds me of the leadership development courses for humans and uh, the, yeah. the uh, challenge courses, yeah. the, high, the high ropes courses. This one, yeah. they walk the board in between the tires. Oh, That's the idea. That out. They should not just swim through the tires and panic. Every piece of wood in between each tire is meant to be touched by at least one back foot wow. and at least one front foot. Okay. This, I, I have to tell you, the owner built it, and I have—I actually never saw a dog complete it. Really? Yeah. It's, it, it, I've never seen a dog complete it. I would love to bring my dog out here and complete it. So, ideally, we go up, we walk all these nice little boards. Again, we do not skip a board, and we can tell our dog to stay at any moment. We come up here, we turn our happy selves around, we come back. Now, the idea was... Oh, to get them to now skip. No. Oh. <gasps> oh, yeah. my God. Now... No, and uh, like the the owner here, the the husband of the lady you met, he's a crazy man. Like he will come up with, he will come up with something he doesn't think a dog can do just to see if he can teach a dog to do it. Yeah. When this was initially built, these were not beveled, 
and it was getting too difficult. I was destroying my knuckles, helping dogs place their feet, oh, and it yeah, was banging. Can, yeah, so they see. so they beveled it. Yeah. Um, but obviously, dogs that are only so wide physically cannot do this. So then, or too small. Yeah. So then they would just do this on the way back. Wow. And then there's That's another amazing. piece over here. Again, it's a little dependent on the size of the dog. Everything, again, front foot, back foot, front foot, back foot. Down all of these. Fun. This place is amazing. Then the, okay, so this is another teeter totter. Are you ready for this shit? So I'm holding? like, I'm so distracted right this now. This is a teeter totter. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Holy shit balls! So you got a dog that doesn't give a oh, shit Oh, there's about that. rocks in there? Oh there's my rocks. god! That's, That's crazy. A dog that can handle that is a confident fucking dog. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you how we got this equipment. This is funny. Every year this place does a canine Olympics event. They use this with the canine officers, but what they had to do was, in one heat, the officer ran the top of the logs and their dog had to go underneath. And in the opposite one, the officer was crawling underneath and their dog had to walk the top. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. This place is amazing. Suspension bridge. And again, you gotta watch yourself. If you got a wobbly. Yes, yeah, we're wobbly. I see a piece broke over there. Yeah. Some of this stuff has seen better days. So people go up with their dogs too. This is where I draw the line because um I don't do heights. But <laughs> now if you back <gasps> up. Oh my god, wait, wait, hold on a second. This is on. Uh -huh. Oh, hell no. Pretty and nothing stuff. to hold now, on to. Now back up. Back up. There's hurdle jumps up there. Oh my God. They go over the hurdle jumps and then down the stairs at the other side. G that oh. stuff, it's not just about what cool shit can we make our dogs do. It is muscle memory and skill building. Yeah. Okay, to move up to this. And, and do they, they hop through this giant uh -huh, tire and then, and then yep. continue on? Yep. Wow. You did it. You're a good girl too! <laughs> Yay! Oh my goodness. The coolest obstacle course I've ever seen. I think it's a really undersold method and I think that it's important for a couple reasons. For example, if I'm teaching a dog to, to step on these podiums and in order to teach the dog, okay, again, I can't shape this. I have a dog that already knows when I say step or place or here, I mean put your foot here, but they've never done it on this piece of equipment. I need a dog if they don't know what to do with their foot. Did you lose yourself? Oh, you no, got no, no. Okay. I'm just I got a dog. If they don't know what to do with their foot, I will literally pick up a foot and place it. Now, if your dog does not want to let you do this, you have no business being out here. This is where, to me, molding becomes valuable. If you have a dog that allows you to use your hands to manipulate their body and they're not going into opposition, they're comfortable with this, they allow it, they understand. My person's gonna do something with my body and they're gonna put my name on it, or, I'm sorry, a, a name on it, and then I do it, cool. Um, so, I mean, I, I think... There, but there has to be a modicum of, and I know a lot of people think that, that you, know, you know, like molding, and especially when you start incorporating corrections, it's gonna break trust. But here's the thing, if your dog doesn't trust you, you will never teach them this. It's not like, um, oh, my dog's afraid of shiny floors, so I'm just going to make him suck it up and drag it on. You know, okay, good luck doing that here. Yeah. It will not happen. So molding done well should create trust. It should not create opposition. And that's something I'm teaching down at that first level course. Um, and I'll actually, I'll give you a quote. We could do it right here. I'll show you. But on the, um, the telephone poles is where I would use it the most. What people need to understand about uh, your dog's movement is when you are doing obstacles of this nature, the rear drives the front. Here, we go through the mud flap onto the window, we climb up here, there's a platform up there, and then they would heel back down the stairs to the side. Wow. In addition to that, you wanna talk about trust. Now, with a canine, you could be putting the dog into an attic, into a crawl space if you've got somebody hiding out. So, our doggy comes up these stairs, into the hole, doggy. Yay. Doggy goes into the hole. Harry Potter doggies. Yeah. And now we shut it. Dog's got to trust you. Dog should not be panicking to come out. Your dog is panicking to come out. They're not this. And then now we can call them out. Oh my God. Look at that. Yeah. It's a lot of Wait, you so. Do, you can do opposite <clears throat> two in and then out of the hole. 
So how many like canine like office officer what every police dog, police dog that goes through here goes. goes but like how this. many companies around the U.S. train like this? Um, or is this? I don't know. I've never trained with any other canine place. I, don't I know. mean, this is amazing. The equipment and the time and just the yeah, thought. This wild. is awesome. A lot of thought into everything. So we're at what is it? Tops canine yeah. training. Yep. Tops and dog training. Tops and dog training with Kelly Winky drinking some water, keeping hydrated.